If you want to learn more about human evolution, ancient inventions, ancient structures, theories surrounding the ancient world, ancient queens, or new archaeological discoveries, then subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload, and maybe consider becoming a Patreon or channel member. Did you know that a new species of human was discovered less than a full year ago? This species can most likely solve a mystery that's been bothering anthropologists for a really long time, actually. 120,000 years ago, there was a Neanderthal in Europe that carried Homo sapiens DNA within them. That is about 70,000 years earlier than the first Homo sapiens even arrived in Europe. So how is this possible? How did this Homo sapiens DNA made its way inside this Neanderthal. More on this later in this video, so be sure to stick around. As you know, I am quite <laughs> on top of new archaeological discoveries, and currently I am researching the human evolutionary timeline. But up until a few weeks ago, I had no knowledge about a new species of human beings of which the fossilized remains were discovered in 2010. These fossilized remains were classified to belong to a new species of humans recently, and the news about this species of humans actually broke last year in June of 2021. My name is Kaylee, and in this video I am going to tell you everything that I could find out about the new species of human that were discovered at the Nesher Ramla site in Israel. So recently I created a video where I looked into the differences between hominids and hominins. And in this video, I looked into the human evolutionary timeline as well. During the research of this video, I learned about the discovery of a new species of humans that I had not heard about, which really frustrated me to be completely honest with you. I'm sure it was covered in the news and I have found some news articles from, you know, lesser media. It seems like this discovery was not covered by the bigger news outlets. And this is probably why I hadn't heard about it, why it hadn't come on my radar at all at the time. I'm still frustrated by it, yes. But thankfully, now that I know about it, I can look into it and tell you everything there is to know about the Nesher Ramla Homo, a group of ancient humans that lived for hundreds of thousands of years in Israel. In a quarry that is operated by a cement factory in Nesher Ramla in Israel, hominin remains were discovered. So in 2010 and 2011, the quarry became a protected site so that the archaeologists could, you know, come in and do the proper excavations that were needed to be carried out for, you know, getting all the stuff out that they need. As you can imagine, because of the fact that this was a quarry and that time seemed to be of the essence for the cement company to, you know, get back to their usual work, the archaeologists did not take too much time for the investigation of the fossilized remains that they were uncovering at the time. After the excavations were carried out and the work of the archaeologists on site was finished, <laughs> the quarry, as you can imagine, got demolished so that the cement factory could go back to their work because, you know, that's still important. They needed to make their money as well. So at this point in time, in 2022, there is nothing left, just nothing left of the archaeological site in which these fossilized remains were found of, you know, these hominins. The Nesher Ramla archaeological site was a karst depression, which is a shallow pit as it dissolved like limestone does, actually, a very, very, very long time ago. This pit was used by different hominins for quite some time, and it is very rich in archaeological material, and it was quite well preserved. This pit gradually filled in with sediment as time went by, and therefore it preserved its contents really quite well. The team of archaeologists discovered parts of a roof of a hominin skull, and a nearly complete jawbone. These are thought to have belonged to one individual. It's not clear if this individual was a man or a woman, but the teeth are an indication that this individual was at least a young adult. Not a child, thank God. Finally, not bones of a child. 
The sediments in which the fossilized bones were found date from between 140,000 and 120,000 years ago, which means that the fossilized bones date from in between that time frame. Homo sapiens had already emerged in Africa by this time, so at first it was of course assumed that the hominin fossils that were found at Nesharamla were Homo sapiens. Of course, around 140,000 years ago, Homo sapiens weren't the only hominins living in the area. Neanderthals were also living in Europe and Western Asia, and the Denisovan lived in Eastern Asia as well at this time. Uh, Homo erectus was, you know, still in Indonesia, just, you know. So the first thing the archaeologists did was try and find out if the fossilized remains could belong to any of these three known hominins. Could they be Homo sapiens, could they be Neanderthals, or could they be Denisovans? The skull was really quite low and flat, not like the round, high skull shape of Homo sapiens. And the jawbone did not show the chin characteristics of Homo sapiens either. So, as you can imagine, the thought that the remains could belong to Homo sapiens was quickly scrapped. The bones did not fit any of the other living hominins of the time either. So they did not belong to Neanderthals, nor did they belong to Denisovans. The bones did show in some ways some similarities to the bones of Neanderthals that were discovered, but not enough as the bones resemble other features of other hominins living earlier as well, like Homo erectus and Homo antecessor. So as you might not know, there have been bones discovered in other locations in the world, including in Israel, with which these Nesher Ramla remains share similarities, although all these bones are unidentified as well. To name some of these locations, we have Kesem, Zutier, and the Tabun sites in Israel, and we have the Sierra de Atapuerca in Spain as well, yet again. <laughs> The Sierra de Atapuerca site in Spain is really, really a key site in our evolutionary timeline. Some of the bones found in Spain are significantly older than the Nesher Ramla remains, which could suggest that these bones in Spain might belong to Homo antecessor, like we spoke about in my previous video. There seem to be some remains from China and India as well that show similarities with the Nesher Ramla Homo. But I'm not sure how closely they resemble it or you know no idea so the team of archaeologists that were researching the fossilized remains that were found at the Nesha Ramla site in Israel now argues that these bones and possibly the other remains found at the other sites in Israel India China and possibly even Spain should be considered a new group of hominins in the genus of Homo this species is believed to have lived in Western Asia from between 420,000 to 120,000 years ago. And these researchers don't really like to classify hominins as separate species, so they simply refer to these previously unknown hominins as Nesher Ramla Homo or Homo Nesher Ramla. This team also doesn't like to classify Neanderthals as a different species, as they see all hominins to be of the same species and genus, just a different lineage because they have been able to reproduce with each other. You know, viable offspring in their mind eradicates the different species part. Some of them believe that the Nesha Ramla Homa. <laughs> Some of these researchers actually believe that the Nesher Ramla Homo is a remnant species or survivor species of a very old source population, possibly from the same lineage as Neanderthals, but split off from that line. Nesher Ramla Homo has many features that are similar to Neanderthals, so this could very well be the case, especially because Nesher Ramla Homo itself is too young to be an ancestor of the Neanderthals and too old to be a descendant of the Neanderthals. Another possibility of the similarities between the Nesher Ramla Homo and the Neanderthals is interbreeding and hybridization. The Nesher Ramla Homo could have genetically contributed to the evolution of the anatomy of the Neanderthals, which resulted in certain aspects of their anatomy being similar. Then there are the researchers that believe that the Nesher Ramla Homo is another descendant of Homo heidelbergensis, 
which is currently seen as the last common ancestors of both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, and now possibly even the ancestor of Nesha Ramla Homo. There is, however, a mystery that could possibly be solved now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, that there was a Neanderthal that lived some 124,000 years ago in Europe that carried Homo sapiens DNA within their genome. This is approximately 70,000 years before the first Homo sapiens arrived in Europe. And I hear you think, Kaylee, <laughs> don't you mean 80,000 years before the first Homo sapiens arrived? Can't you do math? Yes, yes I can. I can do math, uh, just a little bit. But recently, really recently, it was discovered that Homo sapiens arrived in Europe 10,000 years earlier than previously thought. If you want me to cover this discovery in a video, then let me know in the comments down below. And I will do that very soon, because it was a new discovery and I wasn't sure if anyone was interested in it. But yeah, but okay, back to the mystery. How is it possible that Homo sapiens DNA was found in a Neanderthal 70,000 years before Homo sapiens and Neanderthals started to interbreed in Europe? It's quite the question mark for many anthropologists for a very long time. The answer to this mystery could very well possibly be Nesher Ramla Homo. They could have interbred with the Homo sapiens in the area of Israel, or they could have interbred with the Neanderthals in the area of Israel. These Nesher Ramla Homo sapiens hybrids or Nesher Ramla Neanderthal hybrids could have then started to interbreed with Western Asian Neanderthals, who then later started to inhabit the European lands and interbred with the Western European Neanderthals. At this point in time, this is actually the very best solution to this mystery, and it's quite a strong hypothesis. Something that makes this hypothesis even more credible is the fact that there is clear evidence that Homo sapiens and Nesher Ramla Homo have interacted with each other. They made similar tools using the same processes, which highly, highly suggests that they learned this toolmaking from each other. Of course, it's not clear who learned from who, like the Homo sapiens learned from Nesher Ramla Homo or vice versa. There is, of course, some caution that we need to keep in mind when we look at the technical details of stone tools and how difficult it is to link that to populations. There is, however, still a part of the mystery that is hard to solve. The modern human DNA still has traits of ghost populations, and these ghost populations are groups of people whose anatomy we do not yet know. There is a possibility that Nesher Ramla is one of these ghost populations, although Nesher Ramla could have simply been a hybrid population as well that has genes from both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, but was from a different lineage. Research like this shows us that we still have gaps in our evolutionary timeline and there are still unknown hominins and lineages or species, whatever you want to call it, that will fill up these gaps in the timeline as we discover them in the future, as time goes by. There seems to be a descendant from Homo erectus that traveled to Europe. This could possibly be Homo antecessor that I covered in my last video. And you can see the thumbnail right here. I mean, something like that. It is already hypothesized that Homo antecessor traveled through the Levant, which is the area of where Nesher Ramla was found later, and they could have very well interbred with the ancestors of Nesher Ramla Homo, which could have created a antecessor Nesher Ramla hybrid of some sort, which could, you know, be a reason as to why they have similar features with all the other species or lineages. What seems to be crystal clear is that the Levant area, or the Middle East if you will, was a place where all kinds of influences from Africa, Asia and Europe came together and merged before spreading out again. It's not clear how important this was to the evolutions of the Neanderthals or the Denisovans or the Homo sapiens, but I mean, you know, it does indicate that 
it was a very key area to the evolution of these three species or lineages. Hopefully, as time goes on, we learn more about the Nesharam Lahomo and the implications that they could have had on the evolution of the other three species or lineages in the region. But with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload or do an impromptu live stream. I do that sometimes, actually. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, click the card in the upper right corner or click a link in the description down below. Or click a video in the end card. I mean, there's enough choice for you. I cater to you. Whatever you want, I give it. Um, <laughs> I want to thank my patrons and my channel members for all your support. I'm eternally grateful. And yeah, if you want to support me and my work and the channel, then become a member or become a patron, feel free. Links in the description down below as well. Sources, links to the sources, always in the description down below. If you want to know what background music I use, it's always Adrian von Ziegler from YouTube. And um, yeah, the Nesher Ram Lahomo. I have no idea if I said any of the Israeli sites pronunciations correctly, but I mean, at least I tried. I always try my best. But yeah, with that said, I think I will end this video here. Um, this was Nesha Ramla Homo. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay, Nesha Ramla. Uh.